I had some things I wanted to share with you guys that didn't warrant their own video, but I thought were important. So I'm going to do this little hiking news roundup. Hopefully it's helpful. And if you like it, let me know. I will do more of these uh, periodically. And a big thank you to everyone who supports this channel. I cannot do these things without you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. If you want to support the channel in a very easy way, just use my Amazon link on the screen and under the video. Uh, I get a little percentage. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but it allows me to do videos like this, trail guides, gear guides, without having to do commercials for things like VPNs or even Chinese hiking boots, which I'll talk to you about at the end of the video. So thank you for that. Also worth noting, uh, same thing for REI, just use my REI link and there's a big REI sale on right now. I saw that a bunch of the inReach units are discounted, uh, Motorola Defy is discounted. There's a bunch of great stuff. I'll put a link to that sale under the video too. Okay, first thing to know is that recreation.gov now has an availability alert for campsites. So if you're waiting for a spot to open on a campsite, you just click on this little bell right here, put in your information and you will get an alert when it opens up. And I think this is great. This is something you had to use pay or third party pay sites to do before, but now it is getting built into here. I'd imagine this is going to be something that gets rolled out to everything on recreation.gov at some point. I hope it does things like trail permits or even timed entries to parks. Uh, we'll see what happens. If you're watching from recreation.gov, what I'd also love to see is a wait list where I can just put my credit card information in. And if something opens up, you just get it for me. It's kind of take out the step of having to go back to the site and do it, which people can't always do. It doesn't seem that tough. So maybe we could see something like that coming. Uh, on the subject of timed entries to parks, there was an interesting article in Outside Magazine. I'll put that, uh, put links to all these articles and whatever I'm talking about under the video too, if you want to check it out. But they were talking about timed entries. And if you don't know, a bunch of parks like Rocky Mountain, Glacier, Yosemite have been doing these little tests of timed entries to the parks to reduce the overcrowding. And uh, I think it said that Rocky Mountain National Park and some others are considering maybe doing this full time. You know, it's a tough subject. Obviously, you want to be able to just go to a park whenever you want and show up and get in as a especially as an American and a taxpayer, as somebody who funds the parks. But you also don't want to see it uh, overcrowded. And the article mentioned that uh, in Yosemite this summer, they got rid of the timed entry and they just had a regular entry. And sometimes the lines to get in in the cars, you know, on the road, four to five hours. So who wants to sit in a car for four to five hours? It's miserable when it's really crowded in these parks. I've been there, too when that happens. So I don't have a good answer for the problem, but maybe this will alleviate some of it, even though it's a pain and maybe we'll get an availability alert on uh, recreation.gov as well. This story is making the rounds on some of the popular news media. A hiker had used Google Maps to navigate a hike. Turns out the trail wasn't there. He got into trouble and needed to be rescued. And it kind of sounds ridiculous, you know, just first glance, but it's not unreasonable to think that trails that you would see on Google Maps would be accurate, especially now that Apple announced that they're going to have hiking maps on Apple Maps. So you'd think the Google trails would be accurate. I found that usually they're not accurate. They're pretty bad. Uh, sometimes they're OK. I've tried to get them changed when I've seen them, you know, be grossly incorrect. And it's really hard. I've never had a trail get changed uh, on a request, but I have had things that are minor, like, you know, opening times or different things like that. I did a video on that a while ago, if you want to check that out. It's sort of hit or miss. And when the search and rescue organization reached out to Google to remove this non-existent trail, in the early stories, they said that Google never got back to them. Eventually, I, I read some later stories and Google removed it. But interesting to, to note that it's on there. I'd imagine at some point Google is going to have to get some maybe accurate uh, hiking trails. They can you know, pull all of this from open street maps, just like all trails and Gaia GPS and probably Apple Maps. And I know Garmin does. They pull all of their trail information from open street maps. So I hope Google does that in the future. I can't imagine a world where they could just ignore that forever. But it was interesting nonetheless. If you're here in the States, there's a new piece of legislation being proposed called the MVP Act that will make it easier for military and vets and I think uh, Gold Star families, veterans families to get into the outdoors and enjoy the outdoors. If you go to the REI Action Network, which is a little subsite that REI has, uh, they make it real easy for you to email your representative to help support it. I'll put a link again to that under the video so you can check out the details and uh, support it if you'd like to. I came across an interesting video by a guy named Outside with Mike or a channel named Outside with Mike. He was hiking with his buddy Matt, I think, up to Mount Whitney. It was their second attempt, and they encountered some people who were, 
basically needed help. They had a Zolio, but their phone died, so they couldn't use the Zolio. Even though the Zolio does have an SOS button, you know, there's no back and forth with that. So Mike and Matt helped these people out with their inReach. It's an interesting uh, video. It's worth watching. There's definitely some lessons in there to be learned. Uh, you know, I think overall, if I had to share one thing, it's if you have altitude sickness, don't push through it. You know, no hike is worth dying for, getting sick for, and you need to treat it seriously. But watch the video. I'll put a link to it. It's, uh, it's interesting. Some other things from the Sierras, some sad news. Uh, somebody died on the Mountaineers route up to Mount Whitney. I think it was a French airline pilot uh, trying that. He had experience, but he something happens and he fell. People ask me about the Mountaineers route all the time, and I've done it once. I did it with other people who are experienced. It's not incredibly hard, but it's definitely not just a hike. It's definitely more than that, and there's definitely a different level of risk involved. So I'd say if you really, really want to do it, find people who've done it before, know what they're doing, and do it with them. Otherwise, just enjoy the Mount Whitney Trail. I think that's uh, it's enough on its own to be able to just hike up a Class 1 trail to the summit is pretty cool. But, you know, just beware, somebody did die up there. Also, some sad news from the Sierras. There was an article, uh, I think about 40% of the bighorn sheep in the Sierras uh, died over this last winter. They said it was because of the excessive snow, lack of food, they had to go lower, and they were in sort of mountain lion territory. I'll put a link to that as well, but you know, I think they're endangered. I think they're endangered right now. But 40% is a pretty significant hit for that population. I think they said that in Yosemite, there's not even any herds of uh, bighorn anymore. You know, obviously they move around, but interesting, sad at the same time. Um, outdoor status. Outdoor status is a service that will alert you if a permit opens up, almost like that availability alert that I mentioned earlier, but it does it for hiking permits. He just came out, the guy who runs it, and that guy named Jordan came out with a web page for the JMT. So if you're thinking about doing the JMT, he has a great resource there. It's almost in the style of a guide that I would do um, where it talks about resupply, really comprehensive guide. So check that out uh, if you're thinking about doing the JMT. People ask me why I haven't done the JMT. I just don't have time to uh, do that without getting divorced, but I will do it uh, at some points when my, my son gets a little bit older. All right, let's talk about some good news. A uh, 92-year-old finished Grand Canyon rim to rim. Very, very cool. And next time you're doing Grand Canyon rim to rim and you're going uphill and you're thinking, oh, I can't do this, this is crazy. A 92-year-old do it, did it, that's inspirational. It also means you can do it too. Obviously don't push through something that might be a health problem, but uh, very, very cool and congratulations to that person. Um, as long as we're in the Grand Canyon, let me just address something that a bunch of people have asked me about. Uh, if you're watching Dan Becker's channel or Eric Hansen's channel, I think it was backpacking TV, now it's Eric Hansen. Uh, they did a rim to rim in the winter and uh, there was some controversy around it. People have asked me what I think. I'm not gonna go through and critique it. All I will say is that they planned the trip. I know that Eric Hansen got a permit to do this trip, so the trip was vetted out um, and approved by the National Park Service, so I don't think it was necessarily a reckless trip. It's something that I would do. I think it would be okay. Dan got into some um, medical trouble. I know, I know Dan, I've been on his channel. Uh, it was totally unexpected. It was a condition he didn't even know he had, and he had to be evacuated. Um, I think that was fine. I, that could happen to anyone. And then the last little controversial part was that uh, Eric Hansen, after Dan was evacuated, stayed on the North Rim in the winter overnight. It's totally covered in snow. Uh, he was told to go camp in a certain place. It turns out he was 100 yards away from where he should have been camping. Easy mistake to make when everything's covered in feet of snow, right? No one's up there. It's totally closed, um, aside from people who might hike in or rangers. He thought everything was fine. He left, and then he got a ticket in the mail for camping a thousand yards or whatever, hundred yards away from where he's supposed to camp. I think overall, it could have been much uh, better handled by the National Park Service. Uh, I don't know the specifics, and again, I'm not going to get into it. But it seems like if that was really a problem, that had some sort of imports, the Rangers maybe could have came over and told them to move. Anyway, I'll put the links to the video if you're interested. It's definitely an interesting story and, and just a fun watch. Um, in, in the end, everyone's okay. Eric had to go to court a bunch of times. I don't know Eric personally, um, but again, check it out if you're interested in that.
Thank you to San Diego Magazine who reached out to me to contribute to an article on favorite hikes. Uh, I appreciate you reaching out to me and check out the article. There are some good ones in there by me and other people. And uh, a big shout out to whoever did this website that lists the public transportation you can get to get to a bunch of different hikes here in Southern California. Now, God bless you if you don't have a car in Southern California, but I know a lot of people don't, and it's a problem that a lot of people have uh, all over the, the country and probably all over the world. I hope to see more public transportation to hikes and trailheads, shuttle buses, things like that. Hopefully we'll see more of that as more people enjoy the outdoors. But again, kudos to whoever made this website. All right, let's wrap up by talking about sponsorships or lack of them, memberships. Um, if you're not familiar with how YouTube works or how people make money off YouTube, most people integrate a sponsor into their video and they do like a little 30 or 60 second commercial for something that's, you know, sometimes related, sometimes not related. And if you've watched a big YouTubers, a lot of, a lot of them do this. Um, nothing new. It's how old television worked. If you watch the old Jack Benny show, I think there was commercials for like Chesterfield cigarettes or something. But I decided that I was going to do that because I have another job. If you don't know that, I have to do this and I have a part time job. So it's a lot. I work a lot and I wanted to make my life a little bit easier. So I tried a couple of commercials. I ultimately did not post them because I did not feel comfortable talking about things that I would not recommend to you or saying buy this boot if it was not something I would buy. So I am not going to do that anymore. I am going to work with sponsors in a different way. If you saw my last video about Muir Woods, I'm working with Overwatch and Rescue, which was a product I used before I even, you know, they sponsored or worked with me. Um, but I'm working with them. They're funding my travel to some hikes. So big thank you to those guys. But I think that's a nice balance. That's kind of the way the PBS does it, right? Uh, you know, this is done with a grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, that type of thing. So Thank you, Overwatch and Rescue, but I'm not going to be doing any 30 or 60 second commercials in my videos. And again, thank you to everyone who supports the channel. It all helps and it all helps me do all of these things without putting a paywall on them. I will never charge you money uh, to get information about a hike or a piece of gear or a skill. I do this. I started doing this almost 10 years ago now um, to help people and I will continue to do this to help people. I just want to be able to make enough money to uh, you know, pay rent and feed my family and those types of things. So hopefully I will find a way to do that. If you're a member or if you've supported me in the past, I've struggled on what to do here. Um, I don't wanna just post behind the scenes stuff because I don't think that's interesting. Me driving to a trailhead or giving you some kind of information that's not germane to actually doing the hike, which I would never, you know, like I said, put behind a paywall. So what I'm gonna do is this, if you've supported me, whether on Patreon or YouTube memberships, uh, anything, um, Venmo, PayPal, Zella, I will uh, give you access to ask me questions. I have an email, and if you've if you've supported me in the past, and you don't have that email, just email me, and I will give it to you uh, at my regular email. But I will let you answer question or ask me questions. And I will do my best to answer them. Things about hikes, a piece of gear, whatever. I'm not going to be able to obviously get into like hardcore troubleshooting if you have like a Windows 97 computer and it's not syncing with your Garmin. Probably not going to be able to help you there. But if you have a question about a trail or planning a trip or something, um, support the channel and I will give you access. And uh, I think that's a good compromise. We'll see how it works and we'll see how it goes from there. If you guys have any thoughts on the matter uh, in terms of sponsorships or no sponsorships, let me know. I can tell you this. I'm not going to accept any free gear from anyone. I'm not going to accept any testers. I took a couple testers from Garmin in the past one, one. Uh, in the past to do a review. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm going to buy things on the day they come out, even if it means I lose early access to them and I give up that kind of juju to other YouTubers in terms of getting the scoop on a new piece of gear. I don't care. I'm not taking anything new. I'm going to give you my unfiltered opinion of whether something works or not. Hopefully just talk about the things that work and uh, do it in a way that you can feel confident that I'm not, I don't have any you know, conflicts of interest there. All right, I'm going to get off the soapbox. I'm going to try to get a hike in before it gets dark out, and uh, I will see you guys out on the trails. Bye.